guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner if you're new here hello and welcome i am taylor i'm a stay-at-home mom of two and i share these what's for dinner videos every sunday to hopefully give you guys some meal ideas and some motivation to cook more for your family as always any recipes i mention will be linked down below in today's video i will be announcing the winner of last week's giveaway so make sure you stay tuned for that now let's get into this week's meals it is Friday and tonight for dinner we are having French dip sandwiches. I've never made them this way before. Usually I just use like deli sliced roast beef. But this is a chuck roast and I put it in the crock pot with a can of French onion soup. And then one can of water and some beef bouillon base. And just let that cook on high. I think it was like high for six hours but it was like frozen when I put it in there. So we've got the meat and then like the au jus to like dip it in the kids don't have it to dip in and I'm not hungry right now so I didn't make my plate um, but when I do make one I will have some of that with it but so they've got the meat and then some Swiss cheese and tater tots and then Elijah will have some ketchup because he likes ketchup cook the tater tots in the air fryer um, I will let y'all know if this end ends up being something that we really like but that is going to be dinner for Friday it is Saturday and tonight for dinner I'm going to be making a turkey pot pie. I've never made like a chicken pot pie or a turkey pot pie before. So for my first time I thought I would do something easy. I found a recipe on Pinterest for a quick four ingredient pot pie. And they used canned chicken but I'm going to be using this turkey that is left over from Thanksgiving. I thought it out in the fridge today. I think that's about how much is in a can of chicken so that's what I'm going to use. You could also just use regular chicken breast or you could use canned chicken. So I've got that and then it also called for a bag of mixed vegetables so I've got that and then a can of cream of chicken and pie crust and I said before I prefer the Pillsbury but my Kroger was out so I have the Kroger brand and that's all it called for but I think it needs a little bit more so I also pulled out some salt and pepper and some garlic or onion powder and garlic powder and poultry seasoning and then I'm gonna kind of see how the consistency is it might need a little bit more liquid so I also pulled out some milk um, we're just going to see how it is with the cream of chicken. And then I've got some cooking spray. I'm going to spray my pie pan with that. And then I have an egg that I'm going to beat with some water for an egg wash for the top. So I'm going to mix everything together in this bowl, get my pie crust in my dish, and get this in the oven. I'm going to cook it on 425 for probably about 30 minutes.
All right, since all of the veggies are in the pot pie, that is what we are having for dinner tonight on Saturday. It is Sunday, it is Super Bowl Sunday, so tonight's dinner is gonna be snacky foods. I feel like that's the American thing to do for the Super Bowl. Everybody's always doing wings or stuff. So we are doing wings. I'm not gonna show how I do them in this video. I will show our plates tonight, but a couple weeks ago I shared how I made them in the air fryer. I'm doing the same thing tonight. So I will link that down below. And then I'm making a dip, like a queso dip in the crock pot. So over here, I just browned up one pound of chorizo. This is like the Johnsonville chorizo. Um, you could use sausage or even ground beef. If you use ground beef, I would season it with taco seasoning. But I'm going to add that into my crock pot with this Velveeta that I chopped up. I think this is about 24 ounces of Velveeta. I had already opened it and used some for something else, and I think I used about eight ounces for that. So I think there's about 24 ounces left here. And then I have one can of original Rotel. And I have a little bit of cantina style salsa left. I think I'm going to throw that in there too. And then I'm just going to have this on low so that everything can get melted and we can have that later with dinner. Okay, here is the cheese dip. Sorry if it's loud, I still got the air fryer going with some more wings, but this is how the cheese dip turned out. So we've got that and some little chips, and Lily's got two wings, just with the seasoning on them. I do salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, and then she's got some carrots. Elijah has to ranch to go with his carrots, and he also likes celery, and I took his chicken off the bone. And so here we've got celery, carrots. I forgot to make my blue cheese dip which I'm kind of sad about. But I was gonna make that for the wings and the vegetables, but I forgot, so I didn't. And these are the wings that are already done. As I said, there's more in the air fryer and we will toss them in this buffalo sauce for me and Andy. But that is going to be our dinner for Super Bowl Sunday. It is Monday and tonight's dinner is a really easy one. We just have some tilapia. I bake this on 425 for 18 minutes with some Body Complete, some Tony's Creole seasoning, and a little bit of butter on it. And then we've got some green beans that I cooked with some chicken bouillon, Body Complete, uh, pepper, garlic. And then this is a new rice that we are trying. This is from Aldi. It is this long grain and wild rice mix, roasted vegetable and chicken flavor. So hopefully we like that. That's a, That took the longest to make. It took like 25 to 30 minutes to simmer but still a quick and easy dinner and here are the kids plates but that is going to be dinner for monday it is tuesday and tonight for dinner we are going to be doing homemade kfc bowls so i cooked up some popcorn chicken in the air fryer it's the walmart brand i think so there is that and then i've got some corn and back here in the back these are those mashed potatoes that I talked about freezing last week. I did freeze them. I thawed them out and now they're just heating up in there. I'm probably going to add some more sour cream to them. And then over here I am going to be making my gravy. I've made a copycat KFC gravy in the past. It was good. It wasn't as good as KFC. But I don't know if it can be as good as KFC at home. Um, but I'm trying, I think it's a different one this time, but it's pretty much the same. Their gravy is a mixture of brown gravy and chicken gravy. That's why it's so good, because it's both mixed together. So in here I've got four tablespoons of butter that I'm going to melt. Once that's melted, I'm going to add in some flour. This is five tablespoons of flour that I added some pepper and garlic too. I think I need to get sage. It says the sage is optional, but that might be what mine is missing is the sage because I'm pretty sure there's sage in their um, gravy. So I think I need to get sage for the next time I make it. So once that is mixed in with the butter and it's browned a little bit to get rid of that like flour taste, I will add in this 
and this is two cups of water. I boiled it in my kettle to make this stuff dissolve better. So I added in one teaspoon of chicken bouillon and one teaspoon of this beef base and mix that all together so it get nice and incorporated to the water. So that's two cups of water. Well, now it's two cups of broth. So I will whisk that in once we get our flour nice and browned. Dinner is done. Here are our bowls. This one is mine. So we've got the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the corn, the popcorn chicken, and the cheese. And I have tasted the gravy, and it is very good. It's still not KFC gravy exactly, but it's really, really good. Um, I think this time this, the beef base, is what made a difference versus last time. Like last time it wasn't as good as it is this time. Um, and I think that's because like last time I had like really cheap beef bullion cubes, but this beef base is really, really good. Would definitely recommend that from Sam's Club. And then this popcorn chicken is from Walmart. As I said, it is really good. We had this for lunch the other day. It's chicken breast meat and it is really good. And I got them nice and crispy in the air fryer. And then I wanted to mention, I know I've mentioned this before, my how I grate my cheese because I do shred this all at home. This is the attachment for the KitchenAid. You can find it in my Amazon store. This is 32 ounces of cheddar cheese and it took like three minutes to shred it off with this thing. It is so fast. So I would highly recommend this because grating cheese by hand sucks and like store-bought pre-shredded cheese is okay, but you know, this is so much better. It melts so much better. So I don't think I'll ever really go back to buying like pre-shredded cheese. I do buy some of them like some of them you can't find in the block like the queso cheese the queso quesadilla cheese but like cheddar and mozzarella i only buy it in the block now and shred it myself but that is going to be dinner for tuesday before we get into the rest of the meals for this video i wanted to go ahead and announce the giveaway winner i know you all are probably waiting for it and i also wanted to say thank you again for being my subscribers i was kind of overwhelmed by all of the really sweet comments on last week's what's for dinner there was over 498 comments, I think, total, like almost 500 comments. Some of those were me replying back and forth, but there was like 450 entries into the giveaway. I just did the random comment picker and picked the winner, and just y'all made me feel so special, and I just, I just want to say thank you again, because those comments were so sweet and so nice and just... Thank you guys so much. So the giveaway winner, I'm going to have the video playing over here on the side so you can see how I picked it. I just go to YouTube random comment generator, put in the link for the video, it pulls all the comments. It said there was 450 different comments or different commenters, unique commenters. So 450 comments on that video from different people. And the winner is Tracy Wilkins. So Tracy, I'm going to give you 48 hours from the time that this video is posted to claim the prize. I will leave my email address right here. It's also in the description box down below. Or you can DM me on Instagram to claim your prize. If nobody, if Tracy doesn't claim the prize, then I will have to pick a new giveaway winner. But Tracy, you are the winner, so make sure you email me so I can get your $50 out to you. Now let's get into the rest of this week's dinners. For Wednesday's dinner, I am making a chicken bacon pasta bake. For this, you will need about eight ounces of noodles, about half a pound of bacon, about half a pound of chicken, some garlic, some Worcestershire, some diced tomatoes, tomato paste, salt, pepper, parsley, mozzarella, and onion powder. I'm starting off by cutting up my bacon into small pieces and browning it, and I'm going to brown it with the chicken. Don't do this. Brown the bacon, 
remove the bacon, brown the chicken. Because I ended up having to like drain some liquid halfway through because my bacon wasn't crisping up like I wanted to and like the chicken was letting off like too much water. So I had to like drain it to get the chicken to crisp up. So don't do what I did and cook them together. Cook the bacon, then cook the chicken. I was trying to save time. It didn't save me any time at all. It ended up taking the same amount of time. But I'm just going to brown up both of those until the chicken is cooked through and the bacon is as crispy as I want it to be. To season the chicken, I added in the garlic and onion powder and a little bit of salt because we did have bacon in this, but I still thought it needed a little bit of salt and then the pepper. Once that's all cooked through, I'm going to add in my petite diced tomatoes, two tablespoons of tomato paste, some Worcestershire, and some parsley. Once that's mixed together really well, we're going to add in our cooked noodles. And then I'm going to take that mixture and pour it into a small baking dish and top with mozzarella cheese. I think I did about one and a half cups of mozzarella cheese. And then I bake this in the oven on 350 degrees for 20 minutes just until that cheese got really nice and bubbly. And here it is out of the oven. We just kept it simple this night and just ate this because I was not feeling like cooking anything else. It is Thursday and it's time for dinner. I am making a soup. It's a new soup. I've never tried this before. It's called Sicilian Chicken Soup. And the recipe that I saw online, I guess this is supposed to be like a Carrabba's. Is that how you say it? The restaurant? I've never been there. I don't even think we have one near us. But it's supposed to be like a copycat from there. So I guess they have the soup there. I don't know. It looked good. It looked like a twist on just like regular old chicken noodle soup. Because um, it's got like the carrots and the celery and the onion in it. Um, but then it also has diced tomatoes in it. And then it uses this didolini pasta. Which this pasta is the main reason I'm making it. Because I have half of a box left over from when I made the pasta fagioli. So I wanted to go ahead and use that up. And this seemed like the perfect recipe for that. So for this, I'm going to need some chicken. I'm not using all of this. I just need to split this up because I got it from Sam's Club yesterday. I'm probably going to use like two breasts out of here. Then as I said, half a box of didolini, some salt and pepper, a can of petite diced tomatoes, some parsley, one small onion, some minced garlic. We've got some carrots and some celery and some potatoes, and then I'm also going to need water and chicken bouillon, so look at that. But this recipe was supposed to be made in the crock pot, well, at least the one that I had printed off, but I wasn't feeling it this morning. Did not feel like chopping up all these vegetables and stuff and getting the crock pot out. So I was just like, screw it, I will adjust it and do it on the stove top. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I will have the crock pot one linked down below for you guys though just in case you're interested. But I'm gonna go ahead and get my vegetables chopped up.
Okay, I've got my large Dutch oven and I've heated up some olive oil. I think I did about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. And this is kind of a lot to prep. It is a little bit of work to do this, but it is something like you could chop up all these onions and celery and carrots like when you buy them and just store them in the fridge. Um, but like right now, I just spent like 25 minutes cutting all this up and the potato. So it is a little bit of work for dinner tonight. But I'm going to go ahead and put these in my pan with some garlic and just saute them for a few minutes so that they can start to get tender. Okay, I have had this on medium-high heat for probably a good five minutes now. My onions are starting to turn translucent, so I'm going to go ahead and add in everything else. The only thing I'm not going to add is going to be the pasta. We're actually going to cook the pasta on the side, because um, that's how it's supposed to do it. And the person said that they like to like add the pasta a little bit at a time. Like You can add as much noodles to soup as you want, so I think I'm going to do that. The kids might want more noodles, I might want less noodles, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and add in everything. Uh, I did forget to mention at the beginning, I'm going to add some bay leaves. Okay, my soup has been simmering for 45 minutes, so I'm about to remove the bay leaves. And I'm going to take out my chicken and shred it up. And while I've got the chicken out, I'm going to go in with a potato masher. And I'm not going to try to mash all the potatoes, but I am going to go through it like two or three times and kind of mash some of them before I add the chicken back in. And then in a pot back here, I have some water that I'm bringing to a boil so I can cook my didolini pasta. And once that's done, we'll be ready to eat. the soup is done and as I said I'm gonna leave the noodles on the side uh, and then if there's leftovers I feel like this would freeze pretty well maybe not I don't know because there's potato in it maybe it will I'm not sure um, I'll probably give some away to my sister we'll see um, Andy will take some for lunch and we'll have this for lunch again tomorrow but it made a ton of soup so I'll just keep the noodles separate because they'll also absorb the liquid if I put them in there and start to get too soggy. So we'll just keep it separate. So here's my bowl, topped it with some extra parsley, and I did the same thing with the kids. And then to go with it, I just made a little bit of like garlic bread. These are tiny, like, here's my hand. These are little tiny pieces of garlic bread. Um, I took these rolls uh, from Kroger that we used for the French dips, and I just sliced them because we needed to use it up and put a little bit of butter and garlic powder and parsley on it and toasted it in the toaster oven. So we've got that to go with our soup. But that is going to be it for dinner tonight and that is going to wrap up another week of what's for dinner. If you like my what's for dinners, please make sure you leave me a thumbs up 
And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!